forgot to turn out my vocals just a little bit on this song. Right where you put that one right there okay. on the end? And, and don't forget to mark it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Don't forget to mark it on your list. <laughs> November 18th, 1993. You know, it was cold out. There was that kind of New York holiday mood in the air. It was kind of festive. It was just getting to that, you know, everyone's wrapping up the year. And it was really, I think it was going to be our last taping of the year for Unplug. So it was kind of cool in that respect, too. We're going to get it on, you know, hopefully for the holidays. That was the game plan. day of the show, we're always trying to get the right stools. It seems like Unplugged should have its own stool by now, you know. Brought a few different things out for Kurt to try, and of course he picked an office chair. It's all flower boxes. Tom? It's all flower boxes. And he, he was the one that suggested the stargazer lilies, those white, the big white lilies. I think it was me. It wasn't Kurt, although it makes the story better. I was like trying to get a handle. It was like, like a funeral. And he said, yeah, yeah, like a funeral, that'd be cool. So it wasn't Kurt certainly foreshadowing, but it was kind of, when you watched it back, it certainly felt that way. Are you on, are you rolling? Are you looking this ready? is what producing is all about, <laughs> floral arrangements. So what do you think of Nirvana doing the show? Oh, I think it's great. I think a lot of their songs are going to work really well on acoustic instruments. I'm really looking forward to it. It sounds pretty good, the acoustic stuff. I mean, it's kind of hard to put that over to a big crowd of fans that are waiting to mosh, you know? But the recent shows, they've been interspersing them. It's, it's been really nice. They're really good. It's a really good change of pace. Okay, what are you looking forward to most about Unplugged? All to show off our softer side, like like scented toilet paper, three ply, and make sure that... But non died. <laughs> non died. So tell me what do you think of the whole idea of Unplugged? Well, we're plugged in. That's what I'm saying, well, how's this going to look? Because our guitars are all plugged in, but then again, it's electronic media. It's like we're going to go to every house in the United States or every house with cable or every house with cable that watches MTV or their parents allow them to watch MTV or whatever, but it's a good shtick. Do you have to alter your style much for this show? I mean, it's for television, and did Dave have to like hold back on his drumming? And oh yeah, totally. We were like telling him, oh, we're gonna put wrap you in a glass capsule. <laughs> and um, But then when he found these weird sticks he can use, and he got him a small drum set. He just, he's doing really good. I was really worried about Dave Grohl. Dave is a heavy drummer. I had sent a PA out to a music store to get brushes and these things they call sizzle sticks. They're little percussive sticks. They're a bunch of dowels wrapped together and they're much softer. So I don't know what came over me. It was around the holidays. I took some wrapping paper. I wrapped it up. And when Grohl came in, I was like, Merry Christmas. And he opened it up and he goes, wow, I never had brushes before. Cool.
So what are you expecting from a punk band like Nirvana to do Unplugged with the volume sort of turned down? Well, Nirvana is, uh, yeah, they're a punk band and all they probably play a couple songs turned down. I have a feeling they might turn up and break things and ruin everything. Though. What am I expecting? <laughs> just, just like chaos, but acoustic chaos. It's beautiful. What kind of sound do you think a punk band like Nirvana can do acoustically? <laughs> Everything they can do electrically. Except acoustic, you know? It's gonna be jamming, man. They're gonna just come as you are. <laughs> you wouldn't want to see a Nirvana unplugged album? No. <laughs> you gotta have an answer for that. <laughs> Do you think they will put out one? No. I just don't think they will. Really? Well, what do I know? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. You should ask them. <laughs> are you gonna release an unplugged album? That's a big question. Oh, uh, God, everybody does that. That's another shtick, you know what I mean? R.E.M. didn't, so maybe we should. That's my criteria. Yeah. The Unplugged was a landmark. After the show, Kurt was in kind of a weird mood. And so I asked him, what's up? He was like, I think it was bad. I think that the show was really bad. I don't think I was very good. I said, I think that you're wrong. I think that it was stunning. And he said, people weren't clapping very much. I think that they were really just so taken by what was going on and they were so taken by the performance that they weren't, um, they weren't gonna clap like that. I also said, I think that people were sort of stunned kind of to be that close to the band because in the general venues, people weren't able to be that close to the band and it was such an intimate setting. Do you think that, uh, that, that the unplugged being there, like, it's like Jimmy Hendrix doing Woodstock or Dylan doing, you know, Royal Albert Hall, like one of the moments in their career that was like... I think that, you know, had their career continued as Nirvana for 10 more years or something, that moment might have got lost in a lot of other moments or just become lesser because I think they would have done consistently great things. But given, you know, just how short their time was, it's certainly a standout moment. Kurt, <laughs> you should be in a rocking chair for these songs. 